All right. So the next thing that you guys are doing is spot color edits. So what you are going spot color is when you make just one thing in color or highlight something in color and make it stand out so that that becomes the main focus or the focal point of the picture. There's different kinds of spot color and different ways to do it. I'm going to be showing you two different ways. The first way that you're going to be doing it is by doing subjective color. Subjective means like you get to choose what color it's going to be kind of, right? So like when you take tests, right, like a math test, that's objective because there's one right answer, right? Subjective is that there are many different ways to do it, right? So subjective color means that you kind of can make something whatever color you want, okay? So what we're going to do is you guys are going to choose pictures where maybe something isn't as colorful as it could be, right? And you're going to make it stand out with color, but you're going to choose color. It's almost like fake color. It's not real, right? Then after that, we're going to do objective color, which is you're going to look for pictures where the color of something is awesome and you want to keep it that color, but make everything else black and white. So you can either use black and white images or you can use color images and convert them to black and white, which is what I'm going to go over with you. And these are just some samples of a previous student just to show you. Um, so you can see she just, she made everything black and white and just did the eye, whatever color she wanted. She could have chosen whatever color she wanted, but she chose that blue color. But the subjective color pictures look artificial. They're supposed to kind of look fake, right? So this eye color obviously looks fake. No one has eye colors that color, right? So don't, I wouldn't choose pictures where, you know, like let's say it's a gorgeous leaf and the color is beautiful, right? It's all going to be one color. So let's say you have a gorgeous leaf with like lots of different colors in it. I would save that one for the objective color assignment that you're going to be doing later and choose things where something could be all one color for this or where something isn't as colorful and you want to add color to it. So these are just some examples. Some of these are better than others. But just to give you like an idea, this one's not that great because you can see that they went that. well they went outside the lines here if you could see they went outside the lines you were going to try not to do that but i'll show you guys how to do that but yes i actually like the way that the color shows up on this one all right so what you want to do see i'm in bridge right now and i can either use pictures that are already black and white for this for the other one you cannot use pictures that are already black and white but I can also use pictures that are color. But when you're looking for a picture, like let's say I'm looking at this one, right? I really wouldn't want to choose this one because there's like not one thing that really would stand out if I made a color. Like let's say I wanted to do these leaves. There's like too much going on and it would be very hard to select it. So I would choose something more like, if you're going to choose one of these, something like this where I have something like solid that I can make color. Like let's say I wanted to make this color, right? It's not like, it would be easy to select. Whereas the leaf one, it would be very hard to select because there's a lot of different things going on with that one. So when you choose it, keep that in mind. Now what I did was I chose one that was very colorful, but that I thought this would be easy to select and would stand out really well. So what I'm going to do, I have actually um, these for you that go over this step by step, okay? So I'm going to hand these out to you after I'm done showing you, and you're going to follow. I'm going to go through this step by step, and this is exactly what you guys are going to do. And I have these that I'm going to keep here for you, these handouts, so that you guys have the instructions in front of you the whole time, because there are steps. But I'll also have this video for you guys. So what you want to do is you're going to open your color, your picture. It could be black and white already, or it could be in color. I chose a color one so I could show you how to change it. So what you want to do is you want to do image, because I'm going to change it to black and white. I'm going to do mode, and I'm going to change it to grayscale. So that is going to get rid of all the color. It's going to ask me to discard, and I'm going to say yes. So now it's all black and white. But now, now that I've made it black and white, I have to change it back to RGB 
to tell the computer that it's okay to add color. Yeah, Trevor. Can you make it back? Like, can you, like, if you make it back on that side, can you put back? If you do it right away, if I do like edit undo, yes. But once I keep going in the process, I can't. But don't save over. Like, you're going to retitle these. Don't save over your old one so you have your original one, okay? But yeah, once you make it black and white and you um, save it, you're not going to be able to undo it. But you'll have the original picture. Like, I want you to retitle these so you don't save over your original picture. All right. So now that I have that done, what I'm going to do is select the area of the photo that I'd like to make color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this Frisbee stand out and be in color. Now, it's going to be a little harder than I thought originally because what's going to happen is I have these blades of grass that are coming up. And I'm going to have to, like, if I was doing this legit, I'd have to go around all those little blades of grass, too. But I'm going to kind of, it would take me a long time to do that. So for today's example, I'm going to kind of go over them or maybe just do a section so I can, so that you could see. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called masking. So if you look in the toolbar, there's this little square down here with, like, the dotted circle. And that's called a quick mask. And what that's going to do is that's going to, you're going to tell the computer what part you want to highlight and you are going to like paint it in. So you tell the computer, that's the part that I want to alter. So I'm going to double click this and then this box is going to come up. Quick mask options. And I'm going to do selected areas and the color, the color here doesn't really matter, but you want the opacity to be 50%. It should just come up this way, but if it doesn't, just no. No, I want masked areas, I think. I can't remember. No, I want selected areas. It says it in the direction. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take the paintbrush, the regular paintbrush from the toolbar, which is this one right here, and I can change the size of the paintbrush up here and I can change the hardness. What I suggest is that you have the hardness up high because then you don't have a fuzzy outside and it doesn't look fake. But if I made the, the um, like see if I make the hardness less, see how it looks fuzzy around the outside edges? You don't want that. So, so you, want I'm, you want it to be a harder brush. So I'm going to put the brush hardness up because see if I do this, see how the outside edges look nice. Okay. But I'm going to do command Z and I'm going to make my brush size smaller because I think that's too big. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the areas. You're not really painting in. You're just telling the computer what part that you want to select. Some people get confused on that. You're not really painting at this point. Your picture's not going to be red, even though it's painting it in red. It's just painting in red the parts that you're telling the computer to select to, to alter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this paintbrush and I am going to very carefully paint in the area that I want to change color. Now, if I go outside the edges here, Okay, you can't really go back later and erase it with this process. So wait, can you? I can't remember. Yes, you can. All right. So the other process you can't. So if you go outside the edges, you can take the eraser tool and you can go back and fix it. But what I like to do is you just want to be careful that the out, I like to do the outside edges first to make sure that they're nice and clean and then go back to the paintbrush and I'm going to paint in the rest of what I want. Now, I'm not going to bore you and do the whole thing, but let's say I did the whole thing here and I'm a little sloppy around the outside there, so I'm going to fix that. Now, let's say I did the whole Frisbee at this point, right? but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna like zoom in and touch up the outside edges that I want to look nice. So I'm going to, you know, race around the edge here a little bit, maybe a race around the edge a little here. 
So let's say it's perfect. It's not. I would work on it more. But let's say it's perfect, right? So then what you're going to do is you are going to click the mask, quick mask button again down here. And then what that does is that puts you back into normal mode and it turns what you painted into a selection. It's telling the computer, this is the part I want to alter. This is the part I want to edit. So then what you're going to do is you're going to do layer, new adjustment layer, and go to color balance. Oops, I forgot one step. In the beginning, I forgot, I told you, you have to make sure you just back to RGB mode. You can do that at any time. I like to do it right away so I don't forget. But if you go to image adjust and it won't let you go to color balance, the reason it won't let you go to color balance is because you didn't change it back to RGB mode. So I have to go back to um, image adjust, I mean, image mode and change it back to RGB so I can add color. And now I'm gonna do layer, new adjustment layer. And now see it has all the color options here and I'm gonna do color balance. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna put a new layer on top of this layer, adding that you can add color on, but it's only gonna add color on to the part here that's highlighted. So I'm gonna say yes to a new layer. And then what happens is I get these properties over here that pop up these sliders and what I can do is I can mix the color to whatever color I want here with the sliders. Let's say I want it bright green like what it was before. And then that's it. And now I can fit it on screen. Let's say I did the whole, you know, the whole Frisbee and it looks nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do file, save as a copy, retitle it. You know, you're going to obviously make a new folder. You're going to retitle it so that you don't save over your original just in case you want your original later for something. And then you're just gonna save it. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? Yes. So we don't need to make two folders, one for the No, I don't need the original for this. But keep in mind, I do not want you to save over the original. So you don't need to like have two folders. You're not making two contact sheets for this, but just make sure you keep your original because you might wanna, you might wanna reuse the same picture for two spot colors. Like you might want to use it for this, and then you might decide later that you want to use the real color in a different spot color. Yes, Trevor. Um, is really gold the darker spots or do you say you go with numbers? What darker spots? Like here? Like the dark spots are like the grass. So what I would do is I would go around the grass if I was doing it. So if I double click this again and hit this. What about the darker spots if you can go over that? Like here? No, like up top. Here? Up top, yeah. Yeah, you can go over the whole thing. Like if I was doing this, I would do the whole frisbee. But I would also go around this. I know, but I told you I was going to do that ahead of time, right? Because it would take me a long time to go around. But if I was really doing this for real, I would try to go around the grass. So try to choose something that it's easy to select is my point. Okay, I just selected this one pretty quickly. But try to choose. Remember I showed you the picture of the trees? Because it was like too busy, right?